Okay, so we're going to start here with exercise 228, and I know that most of you don't want to hear me talk <laughs> at all. You just leave me alone and let me work. Uh, I get that that's the case, but I have to go through these things just to make sure that at least it's maybe going in one ear and rattling around in there a little bit. Um, so we're going to repeat a lot of what we did the last two classes when we did the elevation view and the plan view. The difference is this time we're going to do a section cut. And I think those three drawings are kind of the critical ones. If you're going to get out of your model, you want to get something out. Being able to do a quick elevation, being able to do a quick plan, and being able to do a quick section would be the three big ones. Um, we, have, we have today. Then on Wednesday, I will go through some post-processing, some little bit of Photoshop, uh, how to use primarily Z-Depth as, um, as a mask inside of Photoshop because I think it's a really great tool to kind of enhance your drawings. Um, I will not go over the top. I will not talk for too long because I know you all just want me to leave you alone anyway. Uh, and then everything's due on Monday. So we're, we're wrapping up. Make sure that you go back and you review the exact requirements. Make sure that I do have an interior day and night render and an exterior day and night render. That's four renders, two of which are daytime, two of which are nighttime. And I get two drawings, plan, section, elevation. You pick two of three to give to me. The elevation, it's only one of the buildings four elevations, so just one elevation is fine, but I need, um, you, you pick basically plan, section, elevation, you pick two of those three to give to me. So uh, I went ahead and I opened up my master site file again so that I can go ahead and cut my section. Uh, I'm going to go to file and then save as, just like I did with all the rest of them. Remember this is going to be destructive, so we're going to go ahead and call this one uh, section. I'm going to call it section two this time. And I'll go ahead and click on save. We did go through this uh, before. The, the difference being that the last time we did a three-dimensional section cut with a rendering, this time it's going to be a line drawing coming out of it. Um, so the first, first kind of process here is to figure out where we want to slice through the building. And I have two different choices, two different axes that would be relevant. And I kind of need to sort through what's the, what's the best strategy for, in terms of what I'm cutting through uh, and what I'm looking at. So the elevation view, I think I did this one. Um, I have done this one in the past, though I think it's a much less interesting section. So I like cutting through the stairs because when you cut through the stairs, you get the more interesting section. So I'm going to cut through that uh, particular direction. So I'm going to go ahead and create a large plane that's larger than everything that's going to tell me where I'm going to cut my section. So let me go ahead and create a new layer for this. We'll call this section. Hold on, let me move this over just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Uh, and then I'll create a sublayer called section plane. Perfect. And then I'll use the rectangular plane vertical. I'll zoom out a bit. Make sure that I'm on axis, so I'm holding down shift. Make sure that it's larger than everything in my scene. And then I'm actually going to move it down to make sure it fully intersects with everything on the screen. Let me turn on my uh, end and midpoint snaps to do that. There we go. And then I'll look at it in the top view to help me place where this is going to go. And I'll go ahead and start by moving it so that it's closer to where I want it. And then we'll zoom in and move. And at this point, I have to decide where am I going to cut through uh, the building. And so if I cut right through here, if I'm looking this way, I'm going to see this room, I'm going to see the stairs, and I'm also going to see this room. If I was turned around looking the other direction, I would probably move this back a bit. Let's say back like that so that at least I'd see part of this room there uh, and almost all of the room right here. So it's just a matter of which way you want to want to look at it. I'm going to go ahead and do it looking the opposite direction because I don't think I've ever done a section looking that direction, so we might as well do it that way. Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've placed this where I think it's uh, best in terms of intersecting. Let me move it just a little bit more that way. There we go. I'll come back and I'll look at my perspective view here. I want to be looking this direction at the section cut, right like that. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take my blocks and I need to explode them all. So I'm going to type in SEL block instance. 
So I select all the blocks. I'm going to type explode. And it's going to, going to bring up all of these uh, material swap outs. We'll just go ahead and say OK. I wish that apply all actually worked here. OK, so all of those are done. I'll hit Escape twice to make sure nothing's selected, and then SEL block instance again, and then I'll explode those. There we go. Hit Escape twice, nothing selected, SEL block instance again, explode. Escape twice, SEL block instance. Helps. Uh, nothing left to select. So that's where I wanted to be. Now it's time to go ahead and do the split. So I'm going to go ahead and type split. Select objects to split. It's going to be all. But then I'm going to hold down the control key and deselect that big plane. So I have everything but the big plane. I'll go ahead and press enter. Select cutting objects. That's where that plane comes in. There it is. And I'll press enter and we'll let it run. And so this takes a little bit of time. And like I've said before, if you get a few split fails, that's not uncommon. It's not necessarily what you're cutting through that's failing. It's objects that are not cut through that are throwing the, the split failed error. Okay, so my split finished. So in this, I'm going to have an easier time selecting it, not in the front and back views that I've done before, but this time it'll be in the left and right views. So I'm going to have an easier time working with the left and right views. And so I'll actually bring up here, I'm going to go to set view, and I'll do left and right down here at the bottom so that I can use those to help me make my selections. Um, you could also, of course, make your selections in the top view. So we can work through this. Now, the part of the building that I'm going to keep is the part on this side here. And the part that I'm going to make go away in the, um, in the section is the back part of the building here. So the easier way of making that selection is to work in the right view, right there. And so here I can see pretty easily there's the part of the building that I'm going to make go away. So that's the part I'm going to apply the see-through material to. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and uh, select all of the glass in the entire building. And I'll do that by opening up the V-Ray um, Asset Editor here. I'm going to go into Materials. I'm going to look for Basic Glass, which is the material that I'm using for all of the windows. And I will right-click on that material and say Select Objects in Scene. This will select all the objects that have basic glass applied to them. I will then come over to my layer stack here, create a new layer for glass, and I will right click on glass and say change all, uh, change object layer. So now all of the glass is now on this layer. Basically I took all the glass from the scene and threw it onto one layer so I have more fine control of it. I'll go ahead and turn off that glass so it's no longer part of my scene. And now I can start to work with my see-through material. So the back half here needs to have the see-through material applied to it. I'll, oh, in the V-Ray Asset Editor, I need to load up the see-through material. I have that on my flash drive, so fra flash drive. So I will go ahead and click on the Import VR Mat button. This will let me bring up my see-through material. It's in Resources, V-Ray, V-Ray Materials, uh, Special Materials, See-Through, and there it is. And we'll go ahead and open it. Remember the see-through material is 
uh, transparent to the eye, but is opaque, so it still casts shadows the way it should. So uh, I now need to select everything that is on the back half of my plane. So I'll drag it going that way. And if I look closely, I've gotten everything right there. Yep, that looks right. I'm going to go ahead and apply that see-through material. So I'll right click on it and say apply material to selection. And now all of that is see-through. Now remember, I can use that to my advantage. So if I wanted to select all of that again, I can right click now and say select objects and scene and I'll get all of those objects again. Furthermore, I could right now type hide oops, to get kind of a preview of what this would look like. So there it is in my exterior render view, right like that. And so now I can kind of see through it. I'm going to turn off my uh, section plane. I thought I was. Change object layer here. There we go. So I can see in here a little bit better. Now, I currently don't have any section fills applied just yet. So it would be a good idea to go ahead and uh, put in some of those fills for the walls. It also is probably a good idea to try to fill in down below my model here. So the part that extends down from the, uh, from the uh, terrain. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the wall fills. So in the section layer here, I'll create a new sub layer called wall fill. You can call it section fill if you wanted. Uh, I'll make that the current layer. And then I'll use my rectangular uh, plane here. I'm going to do rectangular plane three points. I think that'll work pretty fast here. And we'll zoom in and I'll snap to my endpoints and start to fill in my scene. There we go. Let me turn on perpendicular snap. The Section Tools plugin, which does not work for this version of Rhino for whatever reason, used to do a lot of this for you, so you didn't have to go through and manually add the, the section fills. Uh, it does make a difference, though, to put the section fills in. You'll get better rendered results afterward. So bear with me just a little bit longer. I won't do all of them, but I'm just trying to get enough so that when you go to look at it, it's going to look a little bit better. All right, so I've kind of worked on filling it in. Let me fill in this last little piece right there, like that. I did not fill in all the individual stairs, and I think it would help to do that, but I'm not going to worry about it just yet. So now we get to the point where we kind of need to work on the rest of this, the terrain part. So if I look at this, I can actually duplicate the edges of this terrain. So I'm going to type in dupe edge and select that edge and this edge right there. I'll go ahead and press Enter. That gives me those two edges. I'm then going to copy those edges, V for vertical, and we'll go down by maybe 100 feet. So I'll type negative 100 feet, and there they are directly below. So if I select this curve and this curve, I can then type loft and create a nice fill there. Same thing here and there, and I can type loft and that creates a nice fill there. I still need to fill underneath my, my building, so I go ahead and go back. Uh, I'll use the vertical plane this time because all these need to be vertical, and I'll drop that down. 
I'll come across there and there, and we'll drop this down like that. Um, the pool is a little bit more problematic because uh, I have a, kind of a cut through the pool here. Not that this end of the pool is exactly the way you want to see it, but I need to sort out kind of how that fills in and or whether I want to fill that in. Um, I could do a loft. I could duplicate edges and do a loft between the two. I could also, for simplicity purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and fill the whole thing in all the way across like that, and we'll come down to, say, right about there. I'm just trying to simplify things. Uh, in an ideal world, I'd deal with that, and uh, we, could, we could mimic the water surface, etc. But that's good enough for right now. I'm going to create a material that's just black for my wall fill. So I'll go ahead and click on the new material. It's going to be a generic material. I will call it wall fill. And the wall fill layer I'm going to apply to my... Actually, I'll do it from this direction here. Let's apply that material. There's the wall fill. And there it is, applied. And then I'm going to take the wall fill, I'll open the drawer to the right side, and I'm just going to change the diffuse color to black. So now when I go ahead and do the rendering, everything that I've cut through is going to end up just being black, which is good. So at this point, I'm getting close, uh, but I haven't dealt with the glass just yet. And so it's now time to deal with the glass. I'm going to turn the glass back on, and you can pretty easily see the glass that's, that's sticking out in the wrong direction. So all the glass that's on the, let's call it the, the side of the section that we're keeping, just stays the same. It's the glass that's on the other side. And so if I switch back into my uh, right view here, we can easily see the glass that is not included. And so I could select all of those pieces of glass. And all of these pieces of glass just need to be fully transparent. So I'll go into my V-Ray. I'll go into my materials. I'm going to create a new material. It's going to be generic. And this one is going to be transparent. All right, and under transparent here, um, excuse me, in the drawer to the right under opacity, I'm going to set that opacity value to zero, so it's just completely transparent as if there's nothing there. The alternative would be to just hide all of those pieces of glass. You could do that as well. Let me right click on transparent and say apply um, material to selection right there. And so now all of those are transparent. At this point, I can show all the remaining objects that I had hidden. So I'll type show, and I'll get the, the, the back half of the drawing here. There we go. So it's time to set up my view for this, for my rendering. So to set up my view, I want to orient my camera to one of these rear surfaces so that I'm looking uh, right at the building. Uh, and I want to make sure that it's set up for parallel projection. So when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and um, click on the little triangle here, come down to Set Camera, and I'm going to choose Orient Camera to Surface right there. When I do that, it'll ask me to select a surface. So I'll select that rear surface. And then it will say select a point on the surface. Now when I select a point on the surface, you can see it's, it's jumping to the middle now, that little arrow that appears, you guys see that arrow? That arrow needs to be pointing the opposite direction of the way the camera is looking. So it's pointing back toward the camera. So in this scenario, it's pointing back toward the camera. And I'll go ahead and I'll click. Let me do it right on the side there, right there. And it reorients the camera to that viewport, the viewpoint. Now, I also need to switch, with nothing selected here, my projection type from perspective into parallel, which is going to have me looking straight at uh, the back of my building. So we'll zoom out just a little bit, like eh, right about there. That looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and save this view. So I'm going to go to Set View, Named Views. Actually, I'm not sure that I'm seeing everything I want to see just yet. 
Uh, I'll come back and resave it, but I want to zoom out a little bit more because I wasn't seeing the pool over on this side. So we'll zoom out just a little bit. I might even pan just a bit to pull this one over, and we'll say right about there. I'll go ahead and click on the Save View, and we'll call this Section 2, and I'll say OK. That'll let me return to the Section 2 layer. So I'll go ahead and close that. Now you see that this half of the material, or this half of the terrain, is right in the way of what I'm trying to look, look at. So I'm going to go ahead and take that half and type in hide so that it goes away. At this point, now I can start to work through both a Make 2D and a render of this particular section. So I'll go ahead and save it just in case something were to crash. And then it's, it's time to go ahead and make the, uh, the, the uh, render and the Make 2D of this particular space. So if I wanted to, to do the Make 2D, I would go ahead and hide this half of the building. So I'll select it all as I've been doing. Right there. I have it all. I'll go ahead and type hide. There it is. I can make section active here. And then I can go ahead and type in make 2D. Select objects to draw. It's going to be all. And I'll go ahead and press enter. Then we get to the make 2D options. I'm going to leave it on from input objects. I'm not going to maintain source layer, so I'm going to keep it simple for this particular uh, export. I'm not going to turn on tangent lines. I do want to make sure that I check the box for viewport rectangle. That's absolutely critical. So I'll do that, and I'll go ahead and say OK, and it will make the Make 2D for me. If you're struggling with the Make 2D, you can make sure that all the blocks are exploded. That helps. You can also turn off complex furniture, because the complex furniture might increase the, the time that it takes to do this uh, work. Almost done. All right, so it looks like it's, it's finished its Make 2D. To see that, I'm going to look in the top view of my drawing, and I should see that Make 2D right here. It looks like, let me take a look here under the Make 2D layers. It doesn't look like it did the best job of it. So I'm going to have to sort out what, what went wrong and why it gave me only part of a building. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take another look at that. Let me, while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and come back to the section here. I'm going to type in show so everything shows back up. Then I'll hide the uh, material here. So hide. There we go. And now I want to go ahead and render uh, the scene with this part all being a clay material. So I will, instead of using the, um, the right view, I'm going to use the left view to select everything coming right up to that section line. Right there, so I've selected everything. Uh, I'm going to turn off the glass so that I don't accidentally select that. And then we'll go ahead and assign uh, this a simple white material. So I'll click on Materials. In the V-Ray Asset Editor, I'll click on Add a Material. It'll be generic. You could use a white porcelain for this if you want. I'm just going to call this uh, white. I'll take my color and I'll turn it to pure white. And then I'll go ahead and assign this to 
uh, all of these materials. So I'll right click and say apply material to selection. All of those will have white. Um, I could also call this clay. That might be easier. Call it clay. All right, so all of that's on. I'll go ahead and turn my glass back on. And so now I have this ready for the clay render. I can turn on the sun, which is right here. And you can load in the preset for the um, clay render. So I already have that downloaded from the course website. If I go to settings, I can then load right here, load render settings from file. And I have those in my flash drive. Oops. And there's the clay render. So I can load those settings. Perfect, those are already in. Remember, because I'm, I'm manually controlling the materials, I'm gonna turn off the material override, so I've checked that toggle. I'm also gonna turn my V-Ray Swarm on to kind of help with the rendering. So that's on. I'll go ahead and close my V-Ray Asset Editor now. We'll come back here to section two, and I can go ahead and start that render. So we'll, like I said, my sun should be on. Yep, my sun is on, and so we can go ahead and do the render and see what's, what's, uh, what it's gonna look like. So I'll click on the render button and start it rendering. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this for right now. Um, and then, oh, there you go. It's not too bad. Looks like it's missing my background, which may or may not be okay. Um, I'm gonna let this run through for a little bit and then I'll come back. I'll also try to solve why the Make 2D wasn't giving me all of my objects. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with the assembly part. Um, I, um, I did sort out what the problem was with my Make 2D. When I was doing the Make 2D, I, uh, I selected all, which inadvertently was selecting part of the, the hillside that didn't need to be selected. So when I did Make 2D here, when it asked me what to select, I'm actually just going to draw, drag a selection in the scene to select just what I'm seeing. Uh, and that solved the, the export problem. So I already have that Make 2D done, so you guys don't have to sit and watch th that part of it. It's available in the top view right here. I have all of the objects down here. So let me just select my sublayer objects. There they are. I can then do a trim to get rid of those parts that are outside of my uh, viewport rectangle. if it doesn't decide to crash on me. All right, looks like I'm, I have a few of these that are gonna have to be ungrouped as well. So let me go ahead and go back to trim, see if we can't clean those up a little bit. All right, that'll work. I'll select everything here. Uh, these objects are not selecting because they're part of groups, so I will take those that are part of groups and ungroup them. So I'll type ungroup, and then I will try to remake that selection. Uh, looks like I'm missing just a couple pieces here. One more time on that selection. There we go. I've got the whole thing. It's already at zero, zero, so doing the export's pretty easy. I'll go to File, and then Export Selected. And we're gonna go to an Adobe Illustrator file. I'll go to my flash drive and put it in today's folder. Oh, I need a, I need a folder. Uh, 
Uh, under options, oh, I still didn't do the uh, units quite correctly. I need to go back and remember to change that on my initial one. This should be in inches. There we go. Now we'll have to do that export again. File export selected. And this is again going to be an Illustrator file. And under options here, now I can preserve the water model scale. Uh, 48 each inches equals one inch. That'll give me a quarter inch equals a foot scale. And then I'll go ahead and save it. And that will write my Illustrator file. Uh, in the meantime, I've had my render running in the background. So we can take a look at it right there. Um, so all of that looks pretty good. It may end up looking better in black and white. I can let this continue to render, and that's something that's important as you guys start to, to do your final renderings for the semester. Uh, and one of the changes that V-Ray 3.4 has done, and that is that as your rendering is going on, the quality keeps getting progressively better. And so you can save it at any point in time. You can continue to let it run and go back and save it and replace your work. Uh, this one's only made it through past 24, but it's not too bad in terms of quality. So I can go ahead and save that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and save the current channel. If I save it as a PNG file, the background will all be transparent. If I save it as a JPEG, I will have uh, color for the background file. Uh, so that's just a, a matter of preference. I'm going to go ahead and save it as the PNG file with no background. Um, you may end up doing both. So I've saved it there. And then I will save it again. And this time I will do it as a, a JPEG. Okay, now it's time to assemble all of these pieces into our um, Illustrator file. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Illustrator for us. All right, with Illustrator open, I'll go ahead and go to File and then Open, and I'm going to choose that um, Illustrator file that I created from Rhino. There it is. We'll go ahead and say Open. As was the case with the other exports that I did previously, uh, in this one I have to first adjust my artboard. So I'll go ahead and click on the artboard tool right here. And then we'll move this to line up with my viewport boundary there and right there. When I'm done, I'll go back to my regular selection tool. I'll press Control-0 and we can now see the live line version of my section. There's obviously going to be a lot of cleanup here. If I look at my layers, I have a visible layer, a hidden layer, uh, and maybe another visible layer to kind of sort through what we're seeing here. So I'm going to start with my hidden layer. I'll select all the objects by clicking the box right next to the uh, hidden layer there, or right there, that box. And then I'll go into my properties. We're going to change the stroke to 0.25. My color, my stroke color here is going to be changed to a gray. So we'll do kind of a lightish gray, something like that. Then I'm also going to open up the stroke window. So I'll go to window and then stroke and show all of my options so that I can make this a dash line. I'll do a dash line of two points by two points like that. So now that I have that, all of the 
hidden lines are there, but they're going to be uh, just in dashed line form, which is nice. At that point, I need to go through and actually start to make corrections of the visible lines. I'm going to do the global co corrections of them right now. Uh, I'll select all of them. I'll make them all black. There we go. I'll go into my properties. I'll change my stroke down to maybe 0.75. They're not quite as thick. That's one set. Uh, it looks like it created one more set. And I think those are already set up for us. So I'll go to control zero. There we go. And so we're kind of seeing the section view. Uh, there's lots of cleanup to do with hidden lines. So these lines that come down, those can all go away. That can go away. Those can go away. So I would spend some time really kind of going through and deleting files, uh, deleting lines that don't need to be there. This line is not visible. That hidden line could stay, I guess. That can go away. So you really, it's, it's worth it to spend a little bit of time cleaning things up because uh, it's going to be a lot cleaner of a drawing if I go through and delete a bunch of the lines that I don't need, et cetera. Furthermore, there's a few lines that, that turned out hidden that shouldn't have been hidden, like these windows. Those shouldn't be hidden. So we, I would go through. Uh, I can select them, then use the eyedropper tool to match uh, one of the existing lines. I could also adjust all of those windows so that they were a little bit thinner, which would help with the overall look. Uh, and I could then, oops. There we go. I could select the rest of these windows. So I could hold down shift and select more pieces, and then I could match those to this little bit thinner line like that. So it would take a little bit of time to go through that and make it all look good, but with a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, we could get a nice looking um, section cut available for us. At this point, I would go ahead and bring in those other, the, the background. So let me go ahead and create a new layer so I could bring it in on the new layer. I'll put it at the very bottom of the layer, layer stack here, and I'll go to File and then Place. And this is going to be that render file. So I'll start with the, uh, the PNG file because the background's transparent. And we'll drop that in. I'm going to drop it into the upper corner right there. And then I'll adjust the size. So I'll use my um, regular selection tool to adjust the size. I need to hold down Shift to keep it in proportion. And we'll snap right there to the end. And that then lines up on my line drawing. Again, I want to make sure that it's at the bottom of the layer stack. If it's too strong, I can change um, the opacity of that particular object. Right here, if I select it, I could change the opacity maybe to 50%, and that'll lighten it up against my line drawing, which could be an option. Uh, I could also collage in uh, a background image if I wanted a, a picture of sky or whatever. That's why I used this version, which has the transparent piece to it, because I can drop that, uh, that sky in or the view, etc. So I could go find that. Uh, I know that you guys are all busy working anyway, so I'm going to let you go and continue working, but I at least wanted to walk through how do you get this into um, Illustrator, and then you would save this as your final product. All right? Remember, this is a scale drawing, so if you were going to use it, you could actually put a scale on it, and it would be accurate, uh, and it would look right with the rest of your uh, drawings that you've done. It's a pretty simple process once you get it practiced a few times. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention is that you could also, in Rhino here, we could go and use our um, Arctic preset. I lost my view when I scaled the drawing, but once I zoomed in here like that, um, I would want
There we go. I'd want to hide this back half. So I'd select it, hide, and then I could switch my view into the uh, Arctic mode. Uh, and then once again, customize that mode by going to tools and then options. And here under my view menu, display modes, Arctic. There it is. We can turn off the tangent lines, the seams, the curves, the clipping planes, the show, uh, annotations, points, and point clouds. And we could say OK. And that gives us the, the kind of black and white version, which we could also use as an underlay. Just a little bit different strategy uh, or style. OK? So I'm going to let you guys go to work. I apologize that, that took so long, but I know you guys need time to work, so I'll let you go.